What's going on you guys? Thank you for tuning in to another video. And today we are installing two new gauges in the Evo. Let's go. Just as I mentioned to you guys, we got a couple of new gauges here for the Evo. It's something that the car has always been missing. And before I start adding further modifications to it, these are one of the first things I wanted to do. So um, I've already opened these up. It's kind of hard to unbox stuff on camera with only one hand, so I kind of opened them up already. But here we've got the uh, AEM X Series oil pressure gauge. And then I also opted for the AEM X Series uh, wideband as well. So we've got the oil pressure and wideband that we'll be installing today. My goal right now is to get as many things as I can kind of plumbed and through the firewall and all the electrical connections done, basically get the gauges set up to where when the gauge pod comes, it'll be ready to just plug in and be able to get set up and ready to go. So my main focus and my main goal is to get all of the wires for the oil pressure gauge um, routed through the firewall and getting the oil pressure sensor ready to tap into the oil filter housing. And then I'm also going to be removing the seat and peeling back the carpet on the passenger side of the car in order to run the wideband through the grommet and the floorboard and also kind of trace back a random wire that I have to try and find where it goes. So first things first, we're going to get the car jacked up and get it on jack stands. That way we'll have uh, full access to the oil filter housing. And after that, we're going to get the driver's seat pulled and the carpet pulled back. Don't forget to break the lug nuts loose while the car is still on the ground. Ask me how I know. It's kind of hard to tell, but you can see right there on the outside of the oil filter housing is a plug with really nothing going in it. That is what we are gonna be using to tap for our oil pressure sensor. So this is the oil pressure sensor for the AEM oil pressure gauge that they provide with um, the brand new kit. Um, this is one eighth inch thread here, which will not work in the oil filter housing itself. So what I did was went to Home Depot and grabbed one of these uh, 3 8 inch MIP to 1 8 inch FIP adapters. And this is going to allow us to tap into the oil filter housing and then put the oil pressure sensor into this with some uh, Teflon tape to prevent some leakage. Um, but you will need some kind of adapter in order to get it to work. It is a tad bit hard to see, but this plug uh, that you can see here right next to the oil filter housing, that plug is what we are going to use to tap our oil pressure sensor into. So the adapter that we have, the brass fitting, will tap into the oil filter housing itself, and then the oil pressure sensor it's, will thread into the adapter, creating our seal. Before we go pulling any plugs out of the oil filter housing or anything, I'm gonna go ahead and get all of the wires ran. So get the sensor wire ran up through the firewall and through the car, that way everything is ready to go. Uh, just in case I run into any kind of issues, I'd rather make sure that that's done first and then pull the plug on the oil filter housing to install the sensors. Right now, the objective is to get this pigtail ran up through the dash and to come out of this vent. So we've ordered a custom pod from Ortiz Pods and both the wideband and the oil pressure gauge are gonna be sitting in this left vent. So we need to get this taken out and then the wires ran up and through so we can mount them there. I was able to get the trim piece pulled and after thinking about it a little bit more, right now I've got a three week longer lead time on the new gauge pod. So um, I've got the wire for the um, oil pressure gauge ran to the glove box. And I think for now, I'm just gonna run the gauges in the glove box. And then when it comes time, um, I'm just gonna reinstall everything. When it comes time, I'll pop this out and then put the gauges in the actual pod. I think that's gonna work best. All right, guys. So this has been an over month in the making process. So 
originally started this video with doing the oil pressure and air fuel ratio or wideband gauge install. I was able to get the gauges installed, wired, they're in the cabin, they're in the exact location where I need them to be, but the gauge pod setup that I was originally going with, when I received it in the mail and took it out of the package, I was less than satisfied. I was hoping to give them the benefit of the doubt with what they could make and what I received was not um, up to par. There was no way that the fit, the finish or anything like that was uh, to a level that I felt was acceptable to put in the car. So I wrote them an email, I got it returned and then my buddy Troy, shout out to Troy, um, Evolution Adventures on Instagram, referred me to uh, this place called ESC Customs. It's a guy who does gauge pod work on the side um, and actually made a triple pod for Troy. I saw the pictures and I was immediately like, I need to have that. So fast forward to now, that's exactly where we are. And this is the finished product. So as you can see, I decided to go with a dual pod setup. They're dual 52 millimeter pods and still retains the clock and hazard button function with the passenger side vent. So the original one that I got from the company that I was less than satisfied with, I didn't send in my original piece. I actually had them supply me one. And when I got it, it didn't have the hazard button cut out. So it was this weird configuration in the middle to where I couldn't fit a hazard button. And then also the cutout for the clock was never going to work. I was gonna to have to extremely modify this in order to get it to work. So they gave me the option of sending mine in or getting a refund and sending mine in to them after seeing the finish of it was not an option. So I reached out to ESC Customs and this is exactly what I was hoping for. The fit, the finish, the quality of it, uh, it looks OEM. Like the best way that I could state is it looks like it should have came in the car this way. Um, I have put like a little nick in here from the gauge from when I set it in here, so um, you won't really be able to see that after I set the gauge in here. But this, this is what it should have looked like from him. This is exactly what quality looks like. So, like I mentioned, I've already got the gauges ran and installed through the car. I'm just gonna roll some clip of me popping the panels back out, getting everything set up and ready for it. And then um, I'm gonna show you what I used in order to block off the driver's side vent to keep hot air or cold air, because I still have AC in the car, to keep cold or hot air blowing to the back of the gauges um, while still retaining the function of the passenger side. So let's get to it. All right, so this is what we're currently working with. Like I mentioned earlier, we've already got the gauges ran. Um, you guys saw in the previous video, they ran through the uh, kickboard of the passenger side up near the, um, the corner there. They ran through there um, on top of the glove box and then ran up through the top um, on top of the radio. Um, you could do on top or below, but these are the wires to connect to the wideband. And then I actually have the oil pressure gauge here, um, which I'm going to disconnect real quick. All right, so now we got the wires for the oil pressure gauge and then the wideband. Also note that the blue wire used, typically used for logging capabilities on these AEM widebands isn't available um, on the AEX wideband series. So what I had to do was actually buy new pin, the actual connectors for it, which I bought from, I think I bought from Spoolin' Up. They were super cheap, uh, just super inconvenient in a sense that you need really tiny connectors in order to get in the back of these pins, but I essentially had to positive negative pin the logging or the serial to USB cable into the back of the wideband. So I know on the traditional AEM widebands, the blue wire that comes from the back that the 0.5 volt that you use for logging capabilities isn't there. So I actually had to wire that myself and um, the wideband has also been wired into the ECU as well. I believe it's pin 42. So it's already been wired into the ECU and then also wired to my uh, USB to serial cable. Now, on to sealing off this vent. So one of these things is not like the other. Um, this is actually just some heat tape that I got. Um, I think it's uh, I think it's actually DEI tape, but I ordered it from Amazon. Um, if you if you uh, type in gold heat tape, I believe this will come up. I'll drop a link in the video. But what I did to close this off, um, I know Troy. I think he said he did an aluminum plate in order to keep the air from blowing. But 
uh, I didn't have access to be able to cut out a piece of aluminum. So what I did was I took this tape and um, you cut yourself a piece that's long enough to span the opening of the vent. So long enough to span it and cover a little bit on the top and bottom. And essentially what I did was place strip by strip next to each other um, across, the, across the width of the vent. And then uh, after that was covered all the way across, I did the same thing, but horizontally as well. So um, cut a strip that was as wide as the vent and covered from left to right, essentially. That way it kind of had a cross coverage and I didn't have to worry about leaking. So that's exactly what's done on this side. Um, it's not overly uh, aesthetically pleasing, but it also doesn't look terrible, but you won't be able to see it behind there anyway. And it sure beats um, air blowing behind the vent or anything like that. So yeah, I think I'm spent maybe like 20 bucks on the tape and it seemed to be the easiest fix. It was something that I had left over as well. If you had access to um, a grinder or maybe a laser jet or something, you might be able to cut you something, but this was a cost-effective way for me to get it to work. I'm just gonna kind of get everything set in place and these wires fed through the, uh, the pod holes. That way we don't have to fish them through. I'm feed these through here, like so. That way they're hanging out and can be plugged in. So you can obviously opt to go whichever setup you want. Um, I opted for the air fuel ratio on the left side and the oil pressure on the right side, but that's just a personal preference. Um, I've test fit these gauges in here already, so I know that they will fit in um, and not require the backing. Um, there's a little bracket that you can utilize to secure them in the back, but um, these honestly fit tight enough to where I don't think that I'm going to need them. So it's just gonna be a matter of getting them clocked exactly how I want to before placing them in here. And yeah, they're pretty snug. Like it's a pretty snug fit without having the, uh, the two brass fittings and the, the U-bracket on the back. It's pretty secure without them. So I don't think I'm gonna end up running those. Get this oil pressure gauge set in here exactly. But yeah. That's it. I mean, they're pressed in there pretty good. No, no wiggling, no nothing. Let me make sure they still work. Yep, it sure. Man, this is such a nice setup. I love, I love where this is located at. Now we're just gonna get everything buttoned back up. And there we have it, folks. It is all buttoned up super super satisfied with how this looks i'm definitely gonna have to get some shots like this but yeah i think this is probably going to be one of the favorite or most favorite setups i've ran let's make sure she still fires up okay yeah yep this is it so all buttoned up together it looks super seamless like oem i i can't stress that enough super excited with how it came out um if you guys have any questions feel free to shoot me a dm on instagram or comment in this video and uh, yeah i'll catch you guys on the next one and there we have it folks it is all buttoned up super super satisfied with how this looks i'm definitely gonna have to get some shots like this but yeah i think this is probably going to be one of the favorite or most favorite setups i've ran Let's make sure she still fires up, okay? Yeah. Yep, this is it. So all buttoned up together, it looks super seamless, like OEM. I, I can't stress that enough. Super excited with how it came out. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to shoot me a DM on Instagram or comment in this video. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one.